Shout out to Slu, man, real shit. I love Radiant Dance Machines, and you will too. Let me explain. When I finally completed Solo Nez, I took a break from the game, and when I came back, I had Radiant Dance Machines equipped. I decided to run a couple activities while using them, and I kind of fell in love with them. Radiant Dance Machines will allow you to excel in both DPS and ad clear. You can shoot all of your rockets faster than a Warlock or a Titan could. And even though clearing ads isn't a difficult thing to do, you'll be generating nearly double the amount of orbs you would had you not been running Radiant Dance Machines. Okay, so the exotic we're basing our build around is, of course, Radiant Dance Machines. The perk states that activating your dodge ability while near targets allows you to dodge additional times for a short period. Defeating targets extends the duration of the additional dodge. So when you're in range of an enemy, on the side of your screen it'll tell you multi-dodge available. Dodging in range of an enemy will give you 5 seconds of additional dodging. When this runs out, your dodge will disappear. However, if you kill an enemy while this timer is running, it'll extend it. And each kill while you have this buff up will extend your timer. Which quite literally means infinite dodges until either you run out of ammo or you run out of things to kill. In theory, you can run this spell on any class, I just like to run it on solar. When I'm running it for normal content, I use Blade Barrage, but you could always swap to Golden Gun if you want to pre-pop Goldie in like a raid setting. Of course, you're going to run Marksman Dodge for the reload, Triple Jump because it's the best jump, I run Knife Trick because it's my favorite melee, and Healing Nade just for the constant healing with Empyrean. Fragments I run Empyrean, because you're constantly killing stuff with solar weapons. Ember of Torches, just as a way to proc Radiant. Ember of Solace to increase the duration of Radiant Restoration. If you're constantly killing stuff, this kind of doesn't matter. It's just good to have the increased duration for the downtime when you're not killing adds. Ember of Singeing, so when your dodge is out during downtime, you can instantly regenerate it with two knife throws. And Ember of Ashes, just because I couldn't really figure out what other fragment to run. For the build, there's only a couple required mods, so the rest of the mods are basically personal preference. For the helmet, I think a Siphon is definitely required, though you can change the element based on whatever weapon you're running. In the other two slots, you can run whatever you want. I personally run two dynamos just because you're always dodging. I'm 100% positive that the dynamo only works on your first dodge, but none of the other mods are really enticing. If I'm using this in a raid setting, I'd definitely change to the heavy ammo finder and heavy ammo scout, just to increase the odds of you getting more heavy and generating it for teammates. There's not really a required mod that you need to run on the arms, I just like running heavy handed. Since I'm usually running a healing nade, my only lethal ability is my knives, so being able to generate orbs while I'm trying to get my dodge back is really helpful. Focusing strike just to get that extra little bit of class ability energy, and then impact induction to help regenerate my nade. Same thing goes for the chest piece, there's nothing required in this slot so you can run whatever you want. You can put on whatever damage resist mods you need depending on the activity you're running. You can stack charged up in here, do whatever you want. I just have these here as placeholders and I usually change them depending on what I'm running. Same thing for the legs, nothing required in here. I would really recommend stacks on stacks, though you are generating an insane amount of orbs with this build, so it's not really needed. If I'm in a raid setting, I like running scavs, but if I'm not, I'd run any of these orb pickup mods. They're just really strong. I'd highly recommend stacking recuperation and better already, because when you pick up an orb, it grants you cure and it immediately starts regenerating your health. It's kind of broken. Kind of overkill if you're running Empyrean and Restoration on Solar. It's a really good combo just in general. I'd recommend this combo on any of your leg armor. And for your cloak, I think Reaper is a required mod. You just generate so much orbs with this build that you're kind of throwing if you're not running it. So during the recording, I forgot to explain why Reaper is so integral to this build. So I'll do a quick little PSA on it. Reaper gives you a guaranteed orb on the next kill you get after you do a dodge. I don't think there's a timer on it, so you can literally just dodge and basically queue up an orb. The thing with Radiant Dance Machines though is you'll always be getting a kill after you dodge because you dodge to reload and then you kill something. So with something like a Siphon mod, you need to get two kills rapidly to spawn an orb. But if you dodge, those two kills will generate two orbs, one from the Siphon and one from Reaper. So instead of getting one orb for every two kills, you get two orbs for every two kills. This is what I was talking with the double orb generation. I went into Hydroponics to get a demonstration video, and I don't know if it's because of the timing of the dodge, but sometimes I was having enemies generate two orbs. So I was getting three orbs for two kills. It's actually so stupid, you're just an orb printer. Special ammo finisher to me is also required. I run this build with double special, and with the amount of orbs you make, there's no reason why you shouldn't be running special finisher. Because of the amount of orbs you're generating, your special finisher uptime is 100%. So not only are you replenishing your own ammo, but you're giving special ammo to the rest of the team. Proximity ward isn't required, but I like running it because it's just a free overshield while you're finishing. In terms of weapons, I like to run explosive personality purely to keep Empyrean going. But you can run whatever you want. You can run it with forbearance, which is insane. I like to do explosive personality 
Riptide and Galley just for ad clear. Wither Horde, Conditional Finality, Fighting Lion, Fourth Horseman is insane. Essentially any weapon that was really slow or required something like auto loading to feel good, you can slap onto this build and turn it into a rapid fire monster. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck? So the core gameplay loop is pretty simple. First, you want to get close enough to an enemy for the multi dodge to become available. Dodge to activate it and start going ham. As you're killing stuff, pick up orbs, and when you see that you have full stacks of armor charge, I like to do my special finisher. Doing special finishers the moment that you see you're full of armor charge will generate a shitload of special for both you and your team. And you can basically just keep dodging and killing until you run out of things to kill, since you won't be running out of ammo due to special finisher. If your dodge runs out, but you need it back, just throw your knife at something and the scorch will regenerate it. Back with another mil- HELP! In an attempt to get a decent example of its ad clear and DPS capabilities, I took it into Phalanx Echo. I know Phalanx Echo doesn't have much health, but it's an easy boss to get to and getting the DPS is in pain. I don't really talk much during the run because I went into it planning to voice it over, but you can clearly see I'm just spamming this nade launcher and generating a bunch of orbs. Oh, I dodged too early, but I'm going crazy right now. <laughs> Look at all the orbs! I just lost my dodge. No! <laughs> as long as everything goes well, that's kind of... That's kind of fun to run. I also took it into a master loss sector just to see if I can solo flawless it with a kind of unoptimized loadout. And surprisingly it worked really well. The only issue I had with it was that procking radiant was interfering with chill clip's ability to stun overloads. Hello? What is happening? What's fucked? And even that is just a weapon issue, not an actual build issue. But right after figuring out what was happening between Radiant and Chill Clip, I got it done first try. It wasn't even that difficult, it was only like a 3 minute run I think. It doesn't show you deaths. But yeah, that's about it. I mean, this build is really fun. I've been using it for probably the last week now. When I saw Radiant Dance Machines was getting buffed, I got super excited. I knew it was going to be kind of busted, but not in the game-breaking way that it was before with the super generation and whatnot. But yeah, I hope you guys give Radiant Dance Machines a try and maybe fall in love with it like I did. This is also my first attempt at a guide-style video, so let me know what you guys think. I was thinking about making a NES guide, but ATP beat me to it. It's a really good guide, though. I recommend checking it out if you guys are still having trouble on NES.